Hey guys, it's Willie Sandry. Today we're going to show you how to make this sleek little bandsaw circle cutting jig. Why make this version? Well, it's got magnets that hold it in place, plus a sturdy bracket underneath so that your jig is rock solid in use, and it's got a built-in scale so you can accurately and repeatably set the radius of your circle. Check it out. So we've cut our 3 quarter inch piece of plywood to 18 inch by 18 inch square and then we'll just mark for rounded corners just so we don't have a sharp edge coming off the bandsaw there. We'll rough trim them and do a little sanding to smooth things out. So with an 80 grit belt on the oscillating sander we'll go ahead and smooth the corners over. We're cutting our laminate right here on the table saw. The base for the circle cutting jig is 18 inches square, so I made the laminate slightly oversized at 18 and a half square. So my favorite way to apply contact cement is with a small smooth paint roller. Just a great way to get a really even coat of contact cement on both surfaces. Of course you have to put the contact cement on both surfaces because it doesn't really stick to most surfaces, it just simply sticks to itself. So get a good coat on both surfaces and give it 15 or 20 minutes to tack over. It should um, have a almost a, a matte appearance. Some of the shine goes away when it's ready to adhere to the substrate. That's a pretty good coat for the plywood base. Nice even coverage. We'll let that tack over. And now we'll get some on the laminate surface here. Go all the way out to the edges and get a good even coat. So once the contact cement has had a chance to tack over, we'll go ahead and flip this plastic laminate in place. We've got a couple of uh, furring strips down on the substrate so I can align things because you really don't get a second chance to do this right. Once I feel like I have a small overhang on each side, go ahead and take the strips out one at a time and we'll start to work that flat. Double check that I've got a little bit of overhang on each edge and we'll go ahead and press that down with a roller. If you don't have a J roller specifically for plastic laminate, not to worry, just grab one of your outfeed support rollers from the shop and use that to apply some good steady pressure all the way out to the edges. Work the whole surface for a good bond. You want to be a little careful that you don't roll over the edges and crack that unsupported edge. And the way I do that is I only overhang in one direction work it close to the edge and then I'll come the other way and that'll make sure I don't miss any spots and get good pressure down over the whole area. If you work at a diagonal along the corner 
you can get good pressure right out to the edge without risking cracking the thin laminate. Okay, so next we'll just clean up the laminate a little bit with a laminate trimmer. Okay, we'll go ahead and make a groove to receive the combination track for the circle jig. And we just got two straight edges clamped in place so that our groove will come out in the right spot. We'll cut this in two depth passes. Alright, now we'll increase our bit height until we're flush with or just higher than our extruded aluminum track here. It feels like that should be about right. Okay, we'll have another pass to get this groove down to final depth. So we've made our little stop block here that'll mount under the table. And now we're gonna mount a couple of steel cup washers that will retain two half inch magnets. Once you screw the cup in, you can just drop the magnet in place. So we need to mount this stop to the front edge of the plywood base and we'll set that just flush or slightly inset from the edge of the plywood and install that with three screws. On the other edge of that, we have our inset magnets and these are located just to give a catch up against the fence of the bandsaw so that the jig isn't moving around while we're trying to cut the circle on the top side. Okay, with a miter bar secured under the jig, we're gonna use a slightly wider carbide tip blade to establish the kerf in our jig. We'll get the dust collection going here. So I know that's how far I need to go because as the jig slides forward, the magnets will catch on the front rail of the fence and it basically clicks in place so that um, there's no wandering of the jig as we go to make our circles. So we started a couple screws in the miter bar to establish the kerf in the jig. And now that that's accomplished, we pulled it off the saw so we can finish securing the miter bar to the base. 
So we're using a piece of this miter track insert as a stop for the circle jig and so you'll need to cut a piece of this about four inches long. You can use a regular miter saw to cut aluminum. So you'll want to do something to lock the little miter insert in place at the drill press table and drill a couple of quarter inch holes spaced two inches apart. I just hit these with an awl to give them a little starting point in the aluminum. And then we need to countersink this hole closest to the end of the fixture bar for a quarter inch bolt. Okay, so now we just want to create a slot between the two holes and out this end of the insert. So once you have your pivot screw in position, you can just insert this threaded T-Track hardware and then just add the quarter inch screw. Go ahead and insert it into the miter slot and you'll be able to position that anywhere you need to depending on the size of circle you need and then just tighten the screw and that will lock things in place. With a slot cutter set up in the router table, do some test cuts on a piece of plywood prepared with laminate on one face and do your test cut so the laminate is face down and do a few of these until you get the position of the slot cutter right so that when you tap in your T-molding things will be flush on the top side of the jig. Okay, so now we've got the jig itself to route. We'll flip that so that it's laminate side down and get some push paddles so we can control the cut. And we'll cut that slot. So then just simply press the T-molding into the slot to trim things up. You'll just have to make one final trimming cut and I find that tin snips work pretty good. You could also use a utility blade and just trim that right at the spot where the blade is going to enter the jig to finish things up. One more trim and we'll have it here. Okay, there we go. So we'll wipe a bit of epoxy into the channel here to securely lock that track in place. I like the quick set variety of epoxy so you don't have to wait on it to cure. So now we're adding this metal bracket along the underside of the fence. We still have the magnets in place as a catch but this bracket will just prevent the table from tipping. 
So we'll start by just using a self-centering bit to get the hole started. So we'll just mark our centers. And then we'll pre-drill for our mounting screws. Switch over to a driver. Give the drill a little more power here. Perfect. Three screws will secure that bracket. Now with the metal bracket in place, when we slide the jig forward, there's no way for it to tip when in regular use. Okay, so let's have a look around the completed jig. We've got the adjustable pivot pin up top, just loosen it, and you can slide it into whatever position you need. Set the radius based on the scale that's attached, and just tighten things home and you'll be ready to make your cuts. Um, I will tell you on the insert that attaches to this scale that mine didn't fit exactly right in the T-Track. It was a little tight going into the T-Track side and that's something I've found to be true in the past of these sorts of products. So um, I took a few shavings off with the shoulder plane and that seemed to make quick work of it got the track set and from there it was pretty easy install. The hardware that you're going to use to go into the the miter slot um, is just that miter insert. You'll need to drill holes and make cuts but it's really simple to do with common woodworking tools. Um, one other bit here is there I sacrificed a pencil eraser just to protect the sharp point there. You could also use a little bit of uh, small diameter plastic or rubber tube would do the same function there. So let's have a look on the underside here. You've got your metal miter bar, guides the cut just fine. We've got our magnets on the inside of the fence there. And then topped off with just a metal bracket, just a, a plate, any plate stock would work for this. Uh, just needs to sit tight against the underside of the saw so that the jig can't tip in normal operation. It wouldn't have to look exactly like this. I think a quarter inch aluminum bar stock would work fine. Something like this that was about two inches wide and uh, maybe three sixteenths inch uh, plate steel would work just fine. I found these at a, a farm type hardware store and they happen to be cut to length and pre-painted already, very inexpensive, so I just went with those. One of the nicest features of this circle cutting jig is the sliding stop mechanism. It's really easy to loosen the sliding stop and reposition it. If I need a 16 inch circle, I just slide the stop until the pivot pin is across from the 8 inch mark on the built-in scale and I'll reset the screw. At that point, everything's locked in place and we're ready to cut the circle. When you're shopping for the self-adhesive tape for your scale, make sure to get one that reads from left to right. Okay, so we'll get the dust collection going and we'll make a circle just about 24 inch diameter.
To retrieve the circle, just pull the jig back slightly and you'll be able to lift the circle right off. Cut quality on that is excellent. Just like it came off of a router jig. Circles anywhere from one inch, theoretically, on up to 30 inch or even 32 inches are possible with this jig. So there you have it, a super easy way to make circles small and large on your bandsaw with this easy to make DIY circle cutting jig. Why don't you check out the details and see if it's something you want to build for your shop. Thanks for watching.